everyone. Welcome back to Gaming the System, the podcast where three intersectional feminists examine gaming through a feminist lens. Today we are Alex, Jem and Matt, and we're going to be talking about uh, royalty and nobility. So kings, queens, lords, ladies, aristocrats, and all of that awful, terrible bullshit that I have been fucking smashing my head against the wall recently, learning about it and thinking about it. So that's that's what's in my head when we come up to it. Um, before we start, uh, we have got a Patreon page now if you want to support us. Uh, it helps us cover some of the costs of making the podcast, and we will be releasing one Patreon-only special episode, special half an hour-ish episode every month. Now, to royalty and nobility, um, why I think it's a feminist issue is because it's entirely based on your circumstances of birth. It's the worth ascribed to someone the second they emerge from the body of their parent. And so why that pertains to gender is the first thing they do is they look at the genitals and go, yeah, that one matters more than this one. And I don't think there's more of a a uh, stark example of that of the the difference between someone born to a parent who is on minimum wage and someone born to someone who lives in a palace paid for by taxpayers. Um, so, first question is: How do you guys think that what your experience of how nobility and royalty are? portrayed in games let's go first I was trying to think of how many games I've played that actually feature royalty and nobility and I had to take a second because it's quite hard to think but actually I came up with a few there's obviously the witcher which does feature um, like a lot of nobility within the different areas of, of, of um, the world in which Geralt is, is running around and you know you've got you're hunting after Siri who I think I believe she's a princess is that right mm-hmm. yes she is so yeah and you've got the nobility there and the kind of systems within that there's also you could argue technically that Ezio is a noble in Florence so he's already pretty rich and well to do um, and his family are well thought of and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, those are the two main ones that kind of cropped up in my head. But, yeah, when you think about video game protagonists, I very often find they're either, like, very poor and rising up and making a kind of reputation for themselves, or they're already at, at that position and they're kind of, going against the norm of what is expected of them and rebelling. So there's a rebellion sort of aspect there, I guess. Um, those are the two main things that popped into my head when I think about that question. But I don't know if you feel differently, Jem. No, I think I, I broadly agree with that. I mean, I think um, probably my most recent um, involvement with those kind of characters has been in dragon age mm. and um uh final fantasy 15 where you play the the, the prince and his lads going out <laughs> and causing trouble um but i mean there you rarely play the king or the queen you mm. normally play a a a sort of the next step down or somebody who has who has authority but um but who, who isn't in charge? Um, I, I mean, royalty sort of tips up in a lot of games, um, but it is usually over there. You're usually rela- linked to it. You're do- you're you're on a quest for the king or for the queen. You know, and or the emperor or whatever, as opposed to being them. So, yeah, I think it's it's not it's strange actually because when when we talked about talking about this topic, 
Um, I had I hadn't really thought about royalty in games, or you know, so it I had to sit down and have a proper think about it just to remember where I how it had had mm. kind of come into into play for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's so. That's that. I think that that is part of the problem in that we are, as with the patriarchy, where women are brought up saying, "Right, you need to get married, have a family, be a homemaker, do what men say," um, and all of that. That is normalised through the media that we consume, and so much of uh, media portrays the the structure of society having a royal and noble hierarchy is completely normalized and that it's a neutral or positive thing mm. so for example um say with our royal family first off the three of us are subjects to a fucking king we are subjects we are assigned to be inferior to a superior person based on his circumstances of birth. And the fact that I have only really understood what that means at the age of 28, almost 29, shows how when we see our experience in games we don't notice it because we think it's completely normal and neutral instead of profoundly toxic and dangerous in that we live in the united kingdom it only struck me a few days ago that we are still calling ourselves a kingdom we have a king who gets hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers' money, lives in palaces, has his ass kissed, lives in fabulous luxury, and none of us consented to that. No, we're not, it should be when you hit the age of 18, it's like a religion. You say, do you consent to be a subject to an, to an, to a superior person? So starting off, that so normalising the fact that we have pillaged the entire world and it's still seen as neutral. So I, I made a list of thinking back. So it takes a moment to look back and think of the games that you've played. Mm. Just, like, just like with you two of this. So first off, Ezio Auditori da yeah. Firenze. He is the son of a prominent um, uh, Florentian noble. Um, and that's where he gets his wealth and privilege and fighting skills and all of that from. There's Amasia and Hugo in uh, A Plague Tale. They are uh, the children of a noble, which is why they matter. Um, Eivor in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the son of a king, then adopted by another king. Uh, Arno in Assassin's Creed Unity, He's the son of a noble. Uh, Cassandra and Alexios, they are the, child, the grandchildren of Leonidas of Sparta. Uh, Batman, son of <laughs> fucking born billionaire, which is... Have any of you seen the Batman, the recent one? Not the recent one, no. It looks beautiful, but the content of it is fucking embarrassing because <laughs> no. South, South Park did the, the apex of parody of superhero um, films and stuff like 15 years ago and this literally copies exactly what they were doing so it's just embarrassing and the villains are extremely people who have been left behind by society and are angry and you go just use your money to help them Jesus <laughs> um, there's uh, Jin Sakai the main character in uh, Ghost of Tsushima Son of a noble, Lara Croft, Lady Croft. Don't know why that one slipped my mind. So yeah. let me choose a lady. Son of son of Lord Croft, and then yeah, you mentioned Siri in The Witcher. Yeah, who again is royalty. So you see, it is fucking baked into it in all the ways that um, patriarchal stuff 
is built into it. Um, yeah, it's funny you, you mentioned all of those, and of course, now it's obvious. But like, like you say, we all had to take a second and think. Like, well, actually, how, how many games do you feature nobility and royalty? And it's probably quite a lot of games I've played, or in, at least in that list that you've gone through. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's just almost goes unnoticed because it's it's so common. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think that it's important to consider for a moment the reality of the of your game world so i mean obviously it's 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 not real so i think that is that's it's a bit of a contradiction in terms but within most situations people can only go off adventuring and being the star of their own show if they have the financial means to do that so there i think it like so many things in in the real world um you know it, it unfortunately people who are these financially well off families are more able to to do these things than people who don't because of just of the practicality of the cost of it and the demands on their time and their um their finances and their their commitments and so i think that some of it is is just about that which it doesn't i'm not making any quality statement as to whether that's a, a you know i mean i don't think that that's a very acceptable way for our world to work and i think it has a lot of knock on problems you know it's like in politics the vast majority of people who go into politics are wealthy um, because you can't you you can't afford to spend the time campaigning and you know standing for election in, at any level in society, whether you're talking about your parish or district council or you're talking about for parliament, you can't afford to do that if you do, if you have to do a day job. You know you can't afford the time, you can't afford the money to actually go through that process. So it makes it very inaccessible to people who are, you know, just managing to keep their head above water. And you know, and it's it's even something that's difficult for people who maybe are comfortable because it's it just simply isn't something that's available to so many people. So I think, you know, we live in this situation where people with money, people with means, and therefore people who come from these wealthy families that have the history to have made all this money over generations, and you know, that is the the thing that I think we're all awakening to. Um, is the idea that you know these the the wealthy people today are wealthy because their families were wealthy you know two three four five six generations ago usually off the back of somebody else's suffering you know and and subsequently they have the money to continue to hold the power um, and I think that is what we're seeing replicated in in the games I'm not sure if it how much it links to out of obsession with um nobility which i think in the uk we have a really strong obsession with nobility um but i think it's also about the practicalities of who can afford to go out adventuring and you know exploring like lara you know yeah. she could afford to do that because she didn't have to go and get a proper job you know <laughs> and somebody would pay for her to fly there and get all the kit and what have you and and you know in the final fantasy 15 you know he's just he's got nothing better to do he can go off exploring mm. around the country and chasing after a princess you know so yeah sorry yeah, big rant <laughs> No, that's where this this is such a a boiler pressure moment for me because again it's like learning about um, union organising and organised labour over the last year or so. Going, this has all been hidden from us. I, I'm only learning about this now because of all the propaganda that is has been fed to me since I was in secondary school learning about Henry VIII and thinking, oh, it's funny that he he 
he wanted to shag someone else, so he had her beheaded, and that we owe that we've stolen countless wealth and resources from countries of black and brown people and that we persist in holding on to relics and artifacts that we pillaged (laughs) and the fact that and i've said this before and i can't get out of my head that for the last i don't know since the pyramids were built like four thousand years the wealthiest people have hoarded as much wealth and resources as possible, then declared themselves gods and said, oh, yeah, I deserve all this because I'm a god. And that has not changed throughout history. And it's it's as true now as ever. And I think the fantasy element is the linchpin of it because the the fantasy is that people who are wealthy are noble and just Mm -hmm. superior just just better quality in every way which is why they have all the all the wealth and resource when the truth is they just stole it and then came up with a a convenient fantasy it's playing tea parties saying i've got all the time in the world and i'm i'm a duke and you're a lord and you get to be a prince regent and uh all the while the peasantry are suffering and just the amount of suffering that this system inflicts so that these people can have their fantasy role playing is is madness um Mm. uh, oh yeah one one other element of that is Looking back, do you know who Ada Lovelace is? So, mm-hmm. for anyone who doesn't know, she's basically the the first. Uh, she came up with the idea of computer programming like 150 years ago. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow, that's amazing! And then you look back and go, oh, she was uh, Lady Lovelace, uh, mm-hmm. wife to or daughter of a baron. So she's brilliant undeniably brilliant but the only reason she was able to do that is because because of the wealth she was a lady and had the wealth already and going back to marcus aurelius two thousand years ago um in his um i can't remember what the name of what his 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 musings were his thoughts writing incredible philosophy that holds true to this day but it only he only thinks oh, this applies to the nobility. Mm. It's not for the peasantry. Um, so, yeah, that's that's another massive part of the problem. Um, when it comes to portrayals, so we've gone through a couple of, a list of a couple of um, characters. How do you think that male nobility portray compared to female nobility so how is siri different to batman how is Ezio different to lara croft for example well i can name a similarity they use as as protagonists they're all very attractive or what what is presumed to be the ideal form of an attractive person like in terms of what's going to appeal to our audience the most. Let's think about that. Um, so in that way, they're quite similar because they're all obviously designed to to grab people's attention and catch people's eye and and kind of pull the player in on a on a on a surface um, to quite shallow level in that way. Um, but yeah, in terms of differences between male and female mobility, I think. There's still that sense of rebellion in all of them, where they obviously their their parents or whoever around them had one set idea of of how they should be. I think when you look at Siri and Lara, what they have in common is that they're both quite tomboyish. They don't really want to be ladies or princesses. Um, they're kind of 
taking up this masculine role in 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 being independent and adventurous and wanting to go out into the world and see it and do more than just sit and be pretty um so in that way they're kind of similar and then i guess looking at people like Ezio um and even Arno you know they they were also expected to do certain things as nobles within their families and both of their storylines revolve around vengeance, <laughs> which is um, something to consider as well. Very often that's a, a key motivation for a lot of video game protagonists is the vengeance quest line. Um, and for Batman, obviously, it's a massive part of his life. Um, but yeah, but I don't know if, if Lara's never really been motivated by vengeance. She just did it for the hell of it, I think. Um, <laughs> and then Siri is kind of caught up in this thing, as we might get onto in a future episode, because she's essentially a, a chosen, a chosen one, a kind of special, special person that's been chosen to have this key impact on the world that you're playing in. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts on it. How about you, yeah, I think that that you've hit the nail on the head, really, there, Alex. And I, I, <laughs> I think you know, like, there's definitely an element of it's usually younger, young. Like we were saying, it's not usually yeah. the 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 the, the, the old drink current, <laughs> Yeah, it's usually the younger generation, and they are usually uh, rebelling in some way. But I think what's interesting, if you look at the difference between the male and the female characters in these situations, is that the male ones are usually having a last hurrah before they settle mm -hmm. down to their their proper job, their, their their sort of ruling position and their duties. And it's and it's either going out and having, you know, fun, or as you say, it's it's sort of driven by vengeance to, you know, do some last thing before they then go and carry on with, you know, being a ruler. Whereas the female characters, and I mean, I think this is, is interesting because obviously it's not been long that we've had strong female protagonists. You know, I mean, Lara, Lara, except, Lara Croft is, a, as, you know, a very notable exception. Um, but so I think, you know, we, we don't have that much to choose from, that much to look at. But the ones that I'm thinking, the ones that are sort of coming to mind, the ones that you've mentioned, Alex, and, and you've mentioned, Matt, you know, I th feel like those, they are rebelling against what is expected of them in a very gender stereotypical mm. oh, way. Yeah. So I think what you have is almost a difference. You have the, the male characters are rebelling for a bit, you know, just to have that last bit of fun before they settle down. The female characters are rebelling because it sucks to be, you know, female yeah. royalty. It sucks to be female nobility because all they are is a commodity. Just, you know, to be to be passed around to whichever, you know, man happens to be best for the family's fortune. So there is a recognition of the unfairness of of nobility I think that we see in the game in in the game's characters and that is sort of played out um but there's never any kind of proper discussion about that topic there's no there's no one sits down and says you know like Siri is rebelling against her uh, unfairly gendered you know future <laughs> and and therefore she has to go out and risk life and limb because she is running away from something that is more terrifying than all the scary monsters that she ends up having to deal with in her in her life yeah absolutely the yeah so uh, the men there so they they go off and be lads for a while another element is the um men are tend to be playboys yeah, and it's yeah. it's cool for them to go and shag as many women as possible, um, and yeah, that's such a good point of when the men settle down, they think, oh, I'll sit down and I'll live in luxury and I'll get a nice wife. I can, I can have sex with as many women as I want. Still, um, I can do what I want. Basically, I've got servants who do all the all the boring stuff, 
and I can go and ride around the country and do whatever I please. Um, and the women is just, I just sit in a room with whatever middle-aged man that my parents decide to marry me off to and then having children and I can't I can't imagine this is why reproductive rights and women's bodily autonomy is so important as a man I can't fathom the how challenging and difficult it must be for a woman who gets pregnant and it's not on purpose and they don't want to have a child being forced to give birth to a child. Just that element is, can you imagine Lara Croft? She's never had a child. That's, that's really interesting and has no indication that she wants that. Um, and you imagine Lara Croft being, this is another just absolutely one of the most tragic things throughout history is Ada Lovelace is amazing and extraordinary, but there have been countless women who have been just as special and extraordinary and wonderful that have been completely destroyed by history just purely through this hierarchy that Avade Lovelace had been born in a sweatshop, then she would have lived her life never having the opportunity to shine in that way. So that's the that's the horror that the female um, uh, like nobility, I think, they're running for. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's awful. Um, another question. Uh, do these portrayals in games, to what extent are they impactful on the gamers? Is it a, is the, are the portrayals harmful in real life or harmless or somewhere in between? It's an interesting question because a lot of what we talk about in our podcast episodes is the way we use games as a form of escapism. So we're playing characters we wouldn't necessarily have similar experiences to, but in ways that we can still engage with um, to kind of escape our everyday. And being able to play as a very rich person <laughs> might be one of the ways we like to to enjoy that escapism. Um, so in some ways it's a positive in that way, if that's how you like your escapism. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I haven't fully formed the opposite side of the coin, but I can come back to it if you like. Sure. What do you think, Jim? Um, yeah, no, well, I think I always think that anything that we do in our entertainment, what we watch, what we game what we read what we listen to I think it informs our worldview and I think that this is um reinforcing those systems that have been laid down for generations I think there's a distinction to be made between I think everyone I think probably throughout most of society most of humanity we aspire to be the people with the power and the people with the more you know we we want those things i think i think for the vast majority i know that isn't everyone's position but i think for the vast majority that is usually what people are working towards i think that the the issue here with with the this particular group of powerful people is that it's hereditary you know that mm. it is as matt said at the beginning you know it is it is something that they they have as just by right of birth, just by who their parents happen to have been. And um, and all of us have privilege or not as a result of that. I mean that 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 is a is a, a, a thing. But this is a system of of um, rights that are granted to groups of people because of who their parents happen to be because of because of uh, generations of of this and i do think it's really interesting because my husband is swedish so 
you know, he has a very different relationship to royalty than we do in the UK. And one of the things that I've really noticed in our conversations, especially when we're talking about how we relate to politicians and how we relate to the royal family, um, is that the British people are, we are extremely deferential to the noble system you know we we do support the idea of nobility we like the idea of landed gentry we do believe that these people not only are better than us but deserve to have that that those positions and deserve to have that those that money and th- and that's why we don't rise up against them that's why we haven't done a, you know a, a french revolution because in this country for whatever reason probably just because it's so in ground um we we don't react that way we we have an innate inbuilt unconscious bias in favor of this system of this idea that people can be born into extreme amounts of money and they have a right to that that is theirs it's okay for them to own you know 90 percent of the land in the uk you know and not even be registered i mean we don't in this country we do not know who owns the vast majority of our land because most of it is owned by the the landed gentry hence the name um and we don't do anything about it. We don't, we don't complain about it. We don't do anything about it. And so I think that, you know, computer games that, that reinforce this idea that people, as Matt was saying, you know, that the nobility are noble and are better and are, you know, justified to reasonably right, have a right to be there reinforces that system, which is, I think, extremely damaging for us in the long term and i and i i I don't want to see a revolution you know because um to everyone but i would like to see a a a recognition of this and a dismantling of that system i would that i think would be extremely beneficial to society um especially ours viva la revolution (laughs) (laughs) i want a like i feel like the closest that we got was Jeremy Corbyn in 2017 because his platform was just, it would, it's just so upsetting imagining the world that we could be in now if his platform had been implemented five years ago. Mm. And that's such a good point of we look to go we look and go oh look at Ezio I wish I could be like him um and I think associate that with oh that means I I wish I was a king I wish I was a prince Mm -hmm. so that I could have those things Mm -hmm. whereas what we all want is agency we want enough that we can enjoy our lives and that's not too much to ask whereas the problem comes with the massive um, wealth gap that is only expanding. And the more, so their their goal, the goal of the 1% is to absorb everyone's disposable income because disposable income is agency. If everyone had enough disposable income to go, right, I'm going to quit my job and I'm not going to work for two years, that gives them tremendous leverage Mm. in terms of this, uh, any kind of union strike stuff. So they could go, if you don't give us what we want, we're all going to quit our jobs and not work and we'll be completely fine. But their goal is to gradually siphon it all off. And then once the, if they finally destroy the NHS and replace it with a private healthcare system, that's even more danger because uh people will lose their property suddenly the the comfort of own people who own houses and property they are in danger of that Mm. and Mm. it's just it's it's not it's not going very well at the moment um (laughs) it's an understatement (laughs) we'll just uh, we'll just quickly breeze through the last last question is should there 
we come across this a lot, like with um, Star, whatever it was, Star Blade something, Project Eve. Oh, You're that thinking, one, yeah. Is Star there Blade. such? Yeah. Yeah. Is there such thing as a character that just should not be made? Is there a should? How should it change? How how could the portrayal of nobility and royalty change? Hmm. That's a really difficult one to answer because mm. it's obviously based on ideas about nobility and royalty in the real world. That's where it's taking its inspiration. Um, and the ideas that we have around those and the way society feels about royalty and nobility. So I suppose an alternative, if we were to imagine one, would be something quite opposite but to actually come up with an idea of what that might be is very hard because we don't know any alternatives at least in this country <laughs> like Jim says it's so it's so ingrained it's hard to it's hard to imagine what an alternative might be mm. Mm. that's not a, that's not the most um exciting answer but uh no I think yeah. that's that's part of the issue isn't it it's it, it we're so um conditioned that we can't yeah. even see another way yeah. of, of being and and that that is one of the biggest problems like yeah. being able to sort of look outside of your the way that things are to see another way to be um you know, it's like capitalism you know we're always told yeah. <laughs> i mentioned capitalism before matt did today. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens is it but i mean capitalism you know we're told that this we would end up here in this situation, whatever we did, you know, it would always come this way because this is the natural course of things. And that's mm. obviously not true. I mean, there are lots of other ways of managing your finances and managing society. But, you know, but it's very difficult to see another way of being when you're in it. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I do think that we are seeing an in increase in um, normal people being you know get doing amazing stuff i think we do see that in games more and more and and or or people who yeah just kind of like i think the last of us is a good example of that actually you know i mean i know that uh, that ellie has there's stuff going on with her you know that makes her not normal it is ellie isn't it the main yeah uh sorry i just had a moment there where i thought i was just making up names um and you know i know that there's stuff going on with her that makes her special but um you know in a, of herself her background and everything she is and all that and i think we see that more and more in um i think you know like the walking dead and things like that you see people from normal lives having adventures and I think the more we see that and the more we recognize how popular that is because in some ways as a gamer playing those characters is, is more fun because you can imagine yourself more in that role and I, obviously you've got the escapism um, factor yeah. that you were talking about but you know there's also yeah I can identify more with somebody who comes from uh, uh, you know who doesn't come from nobility who yeah. isn't a royal person you know that I can I can identify more with that person and I think that we are seeing an increase in games and I think that's the way you challenge it and uh, you know I think put put royalty in their place which is you know a footnote in history really and and move mm -hmm. on yeah I think that the again coming back to the education aspect of it is that only you only learning about unions and organized labor now teaching myself about it learning if like finding out about it by chance and learning about socialism and it's about i think it comes about alternative power structures that are completely hidden from us mm -hmm. as much as possible we're only taught there are there's empires which are great there is capitalism, which is great. There, uh, nobility and royalty, that is, that is great. Mm. Um, and that men are superior to women. We're taught the power structures that suit the people in power at the top of those structures. And well, we don't, we never see, I want to see games that destroy empires and then replace them with raising normal people up. Mm. 
That's what I'd like to see. Mm. Um, to bring this, uh, we'll bring this episode to a close. We've covered a lot of stuff. Uh, remember to come uh, back every Thursday at 7 p.m. We'll always be releasing something. Until next time, bye-bye.